Georgia Georgia The whole day Just an old sweet song Keeps Georgia on my mind Most of you have heard of Babe Ruth, Joe DiMaggio, Hank Aaron, and Willie Mays. All great players, all Hall of Famers. You will now hear about the greatest player that ever played the game. At least that's what many baseball experts say. He's one of the most misunderstood men in baseball. He was the first great American sports hero. First player elected to the Hall of Fame first millionaire ball player, first major leaguer to make a Hollywood movie. He helped create the game we know as the national pastime. He knew every president from William Howard Taft to Richard M. Nixon. The time is mid-July, 1961. The location, Atlanta, Georgia. It is a hot, humid evening. The gentleman is in his hotel suite reminiscing about his life with a sports reporter from the Atlanta Journal, who questions him and takes notes. He is extremely ill and tired, taking medication. But when he talks about baseball, he becomes animated and full of energy. His name is Tyrus Raymond, the Georgia Peach Cobb. Ran over to my buddies and said, Told you I can do it! Told you so! They shook my hand, slapped me on the back, saying how proud they were of me. <clears throat> Some called me a hero. Others called me crazy. A few ladies came over and one of them said, I'm going to tell you more upon you, time." <laughs> that evening at supper time, my mama made me swear to never do that again. I swore I wouldn't. My daddy said, that was a foolish, crazy thing you did, Todd. You could have gotten yourself killed. I nodded my head in agreement. That evening, lying in bed, thinking about what I had done and what my parents said, I realized it was a very foolish thing, and I never did that again. But I just discovered something about myself that day. I realized I had a power within me that would enable me to accomplish anything I set my mind out to do. And what I wanted more than anything was to be a ball player. I believe something good was coming my way it was only a matter of time. The next morning, I read the headlines in the local paper. It said, Ty Cobb walks tightrope. Did I tell y'all? I was only 12 years old. <laughs> Let me tell you what it was like for me growing up in the South. My daddy bought a 50-acre farm in Royston, Georgia, to supplement his income. Royston is located about 75 miles northeast of Atlanta. You all heard about Atlanta? That's the city that villainous Union General Sherman, William Tecumseh Sherman, burned to the ground. You all may remember those scenes from the Academy Award winning motion picture, Gone with the Wind, starring my friend, Mark Gable and Vivian Lee. I used to visit the set and fell madly in love with Vivian. She was a beautiful, gorgeous, stunning woman and a great actress. Despite the fact she was British, she played the role of Scarlett O'Hara as if she was born in the Deep South, which is why she won an Oscar for her performance. 
Unfortunately for me, she was married to that great British actor. You know, uh, Lawrence Olive? Uh, Oliphant. Hey guys, thank you. Huh? Lawrence Olivier. It was on that farm my daddy taught me the value of hard work and perseverance. I developed a close relationship with my daddy, grew strong work at the farm, and played baseball whenever I could. Let me tell you all about my daddy. I loved my daddy. I worshipped the ground he walked on. He was God, as far as I was concerned. Thanks to my daddy, I became the best player that ever played the game. He was the greatest man I ever knew. He was a farmer, a church deacon, mayor, newspaper editor, philosopher, scholar, a senator, and teacher. He was a saint. He was the only man that ever made me do his bidding. I also loved my mother, Amanda Chicklin. She was from a prominent Jones family. She was an attractive woman with charm, grace, warmth, and wit. She married my daddy, William Herschel Cobb, when she was only 14 years old. That was quite common in the South in those days. Daddy was 20. I was born in the Narrows, Georgia, but raised in Royston, Royston was a small town, about 3,000 folk. I had difficulty sleeping nights. So I'd get up and stroll around that sleepy little village. I'd walk all night, gazing up at the millions of stars in that big, black, beautiful night sky and dream, dream of playing baseball in those northern cities, cities like New York, Brooklyn, Boston, Chicago, Cleveland, Detroit, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, and Washington. I heard cities were building ballparks that held 30, 40,000 people. I also heard they were paying players seven, eight, nine thousand dollars a year to play baseball. And I wanted to be a part of that. I clearly saw myself playing baseball in those northern cities. And I saw myself a success. Now I had a vivid imagination as a youngster. I used to imagine the president of the United States coming out to watch me play. Years later, when my Tigers played the Senators in Washington, the President did come out to watch me. In fact, the President, William Howard Taft, invited me to the White House. It was my first visit to the Oval Office, but not my last. The president was a huge golf and baseball fan. He was also a huge man, weighing in about 340 pounds, the heaviest president in history. I said to him, I said, uh, Mr. President, I believe you are my biggest fan. <laughs> he laughed his head off. That afternoon, it was bottom of the seventh inning. The president stood to stretch his legs, don't you know? Fans all thinking the president was about to leave the park also stood out of respect for the president. Thus was born the seventh inning stretch. <laughs> Somebody asked me recently if I were playing baseball today. What would I be hitting? I told him about um, 220. But Mr. Cobb, he said, 
Y'all have a lifetime average of 367. That's true, sir. But I'm 75 years old now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've all been a, a great audience. And I'd like to let you know that the High Cobb Press Conference is open. <laughs> Y'all have any questions you'd like to ask Mr. Cobb? If you want to ask me one, fire away. Yes, sir. Who was the most difficult pitcher you ever faced? Who was the most difficult pitcher I ever had to face? I'd have to name two. Walter Johnson, but that big fat guy, Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth pitched for Boston from 1914 to 1919. He was a tough son of a bitch to hit. You knew he was going to throw you a fastball up high, a curveball down low. Fastball up high, curveball down low. And he did that over and over and over again and dared you to hit. I'm very happy to say I batted 360 against him lifetime. <laughs> Question? Anybody? Yes, sir. Did you ever play for anybody other than Detroit? Did he ever play for anybody other than Detroit? Yes, sir. Good question. I played for the Tigers from 1905 to 1926, and they wouldn't pay me the money I wanted. Can you believe that? <laughs> so I went to the Philadelphia Athletics and spent two years in Philadelphia with my good friend Connie Mack, one of the greatest gentlemen that ever was connected with professional baseball. How did you, yeah. you wind up in Atherton, California? I beg your pardon? How did you wind up in Atherton, California? How did I wind up in Atherton, California? Good question. Uh, you know, a lot of players, uh, myself and others, after the regular season was over, we come out west where the weather was warm. And I love playing <coughs> golf. I joined the Olympic Country Club in San Francisco, the Palo Alto <coughs> Hills Country Club in Palo Alto. And I found, or a friend of mine mentioned to me, it was a beautiful home down in Atherton, which as you all know is about 60 some odd miles uh, south of San Francisco, I believe, maybe 50. I purchased that home. It was a 15 room mansion, 11 rooms and five bathrooms, not 16. Big piece of property, and I love it. I also love being from California in the winter time, which is always very warm, don't you know? Question, yes sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. Weren't you an astute businessman investing in the stock market? Oh, I was very astute. <laughs> I was brilliant. <laughs> but seriously, yes, I studied the stock market. I, as a young player with the Tigers, I hung out with some stockbrokers. We all drank at a downtown Detroit watering hole. I gave them some inside baseball gossip, signed some balls and some photos. They gave me tips on the stock market. And I started investing what little money I had in various stocks. I approached the stock market the same way I approached baseball, as a science. And I studied the stock market. Despite the fact some folks think I'm a, uh, I'm not a very bright redneck from Dartmouth, sure fool them. <laughs> About 1920, a good friend of mine in Atlanta told me his company was buying a soda pop company in Atlanta. You may know that story. I invested $10,000 in Coca-Cola. Years later, I owned about four and a half million in Coca. I love Coca-Cola. <laughs> Did you uh, have any brothers or sisters or any children of your own? I had two brothers and one sister, and my lovely wife, Charlie Marion Lombard, whom I met uh, a year before I became a tiger. We married, and we had five children, three boys and two girls. By the way, one of my daughters, Beverly, used to own a bookstore on El Camino Road. In, in Menlo Park. And by the way, I think you folks would like to know that uh, 
in my will. Beverly agreed. We left half a million dollars to Rotary Club. Wow. Yes, sir. True. Question. Did you ever meet Norm Coleman? Who? <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean, Tom Norm Coleman, the ex senator from Minnesota? Uh, question. Now, what did you think of the Black Sox scandal? What did I think of the Black Sox scandal? I was appalled, but I wasn't surprised that some of those ball players <coughs> took money from the gamblers. They had one of the cheapest some bitches uh, who ever owned the club, Chicago White Sox, Charlie Comiskey. <coughs> Cheap some bitch. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, they took the money from the gamblers, uh, including my good friends, uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Poor Shoeless, couldn't read, couldn't write, signed his name with an X, it took a thousand dollars. So, yes, the new commissioner of baseball, hired by the owners, Kennesaw Mountain Landers, said, you gamble in baseball, you're out. Even though those men were found innocent in a court of law, as you may know, they were thrown out. And one of the hardest rules of baseball, baseball today is a no gambling rule. It's in every major league contract. It's in every visitor's clubhouse and home clubhouse. No gambling on baseball. Who? <laughs> you know, I, Pete, Pete was a great ball player. Obviously, I died a, a, a bit before he came along. But um, I, I do watch the great big HD TV screen up in heaven. Even though some of you folks don't think I should belong there. <laughs> so I'm well aware who Pete Rose was. Great ball player. I'd love to have him on my team anytime. But, gamble on baseball. Broke the law. That's it. And he will never be in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. Yes, sir? What was the most fun you ever had when you were playing baseball? What was the most fun I ever had when not playing baseball? Good question. You know, I have to say it's playing with my children. I was on the road a lot. Players are on the road six months out of the year. Went out west a month or so. Went to Havana, Cuba. Went to Japan. But when I was home in Augusta, where I live, put my little children on my lap. My two little girls, Beverly and Shirley, my boys. That was heaven. Good question. Question. Here. Yes. Any, any regrets about your image? Anything you would change about the image that will succeed you? Anything wrong with my image, the lady wants to know. What's wrong with my image? If you could, <laughs> if you could do anything over again differently, would you? If I could do anything over again, ma'am, I have to say I would make more friends mm -hmm. uh, and have more friends. I, I didn't have a lot of friends. I was a loner. Didn't have too many friends on my team. Never hung out with my teammates. And my reason for not hanging out with them is in the event they would trade to an enemy team, they would know my secret. Never hung out with any of them. I would, I would change that. Yeah. Question? Anyone? No. Yes. You emphasize practice, practice, practice. You didn't hang out with your team. Who did you practice with? And who was who was your uh, great guidance for you? Because obviously you, you know, cherished getting better all the time. Is there someone who, who was a mentor for you? Yeah, good question. I had several good coaches when I was younger. I only spent one year in the minor leagues at, uh, at Augusta. But I have to say, which is why I like him so much, my mentor was Shoeless Joe Jackson. Shoe had the greatest swing anybody ever had. Uh, he was an amazing hitter, even though he was on another team. 
I don't know how many of you folks know that, but my 367 lifetime average is number one. Roger's Hornsby is number two. Shoeless, number three. 356 lifetime. And great hitter. Uh, loved helping players out, those who would listen. And I listened. And by the way, Babe Ruth told me that it was Shoeless Joe that made him the great hitter he became. So I took him to say Shoeless Joe. Question, yes? Did, did you bat right-handed or left-handed, and could you bat on the other side of your hand? I was never a switch hitter and had no desire to become one. I batted left, and as some of you may know, I used the hands approach, like so, because this gave me great back control. Hitting the ball wherever I went to the place. So I batted left, but threw right. Good question. Question, anybody? Any question? What was your favorite kind of bat? What was the way of uh, my favorite bat, I had most of my bats at the beginning of my career was made by a local pop back in Royceville. And all made by hand. But a little later on, once I became a star <laughs> and a celebrity, uh, I used to say that Louisville Slugger is the best bat in me. Of course they paid me good money to say that. <laughs> Question. Yes. Did you hit uh, mostly singles? Uh, obviously, you, you placed the ball where, where, by the way, you held the bat. And you hit mostly singles, doubles, uh, and then what you on the I, I probably hit more doubles than anybody back in those days. I held the record for most doubles at one time. Hit many of triple, lots of singles, a lot of singles. And my secret for getting so many singles, which is why I had 4,197 hits, the most ever by anybody, although maybe somebody in the future might break that. Uh, what I would do is observe where the first and third baseman were playing. Depending where they were playing, I would drag a bunt down the line. Usually beat it out. If they came in closer, expecting me to bunt, then I popped the ball over their heads for a single or double. I didn't hit too many home runs. True. Yes, sir. What was your highest value? In one year, yeah. 420. 420. By the way, I batted him over 400 three times. <laughs> three times. And uh, only one other player ever did that. That was Rogers Hart. Um, somebody. Uh, a short while ago at one of my uh, Q&As, a lady asked me, uh, uh, why did I retire? Well, I said, well, I was getting a little old, <laughs> about 38, 39, playing for Philadelphia, and I was batting only 323. When I told Connie, Connie, I can't honestly pay any more money from owners, because 323 sucks. <laughs> and I, I retired. Now I had no problem seeing the ball for 60 feet. It was the last six inches that got me. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other questions? Anybody? What position did you play in the uh, team? Center field. Center field. Center field, always. Always. Occasionally left, but mostly center. I pitched twice. <laughs> Good arm? I suck. <laughs> That's why I only did it twice. Yes, sir. Did you ever win a Golden Glove? A what? Golden Glove Award. What's that? <laughs> they didn't have them back in those days. But if they did, I would have won plenty. Um, I did win a, a, a Chalmers Award. Uh, that was a bit before the MVP Award. Charles was a big automobile manufacturer. Got a beautiful car. Believe me, believe me. Question. Anybody? If not, I want to thank you all very much.
Well, we're just at that time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. It's been a very Thank special you. afternoon. Thank you. If you have any further questions for uh, Mr. Cobb, please come up afterwards after a meeting. And with that, we are adjourned.